going to talk about breakthroughs by soul winning and kingdom advancement. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not a program. Soul winning is not a series. I'd like, I'd like to start off by saying that in this generation, Christianity has become an aesthetic, an accessory that people wear so that when they post scriptures on their status and when they post things on their Instagram, people can acknowledge that they are Christian. But not many of us are really in the, in the walk of Christianity. And so we treat things like soul winning and kingdom advancement as a church program, as an idea of a man of God to raise funds for a project. And yet the word of God clearly tells us that the most important mandate is souls. Hallelujah. Do we love souls in this house? Amen. So God is developing in us a love, a genuine passion, a hunger. I'm saying this because I want you, as you come to each and every service, expect your soul to be refreshed and expect the grace to win more souls because that is what it's all about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the greatest mandate. You may take your seat. Among the greatest treasures of the kingdom is soul winning because of its value. Matthew 16 verse 26. In the kingdom of God, there are many principles we can apply. There are many treasures we can dig up. There are many revelations we can discover. But the greatest of these, as I was studying, and as I've been under the mentorship of the apostle, I've come to realize that everything that we do is a means to an end. And the end is so winning. The end is kingdom advancement. Even before creation, when God started creating, he put forth a law of reproduction, a law of fruitfulness, a law of multiplication. Like dad was teaching in a previous mentorship class, he said, God put a system in place where he created a tree. And that tree, from that time onwards, was expected to produce another tree. He created an animal, and that animal was expected, it went into a system where it is supposed to produce another animal. And grass is supposed to pr produce more grass, right? So the law of fruitfulness, the law of reproductivity and multiplication is a universal law that was set in place by God already. But fast forward now to the redemption plan where Jesus came and he redeemed us from the curse of death, from sin. And he went, as he was about to go, he left us a charge. And he told us that the greatest mandate, the great commission, is that we would go into all the earth, into all the nations, and make disciples. We are not to come to church receive the word and sit on it but we are to go out into all the nations and to make disciples so the most important part of a disciple is the soul aspect that's what i want to start talking about for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul or what will a man give in exchange for his soul there is nothing on this earth, there is no amount that is comparable to the price that is on a soul. It's so valuable that Jesus had to come and give up his life. In fact, God was comfortable with losing a third of the Godhead to go into time and become a man, be born into the womb of his own creation. That's how valuable a soul is. A soul is so valuable to God that when you bring a soul before God, all of heaven stops 
kana kwa nkuru kumboitwa ma accounts kana kwa nkuru kumboitwa eh, stock take kana kwa nkuru kumboitwa vanotombomira ngiro zidzorumbidza zo celebrate the coming of one so imagine how many people are on the earth more than 7 billion 8 billion people but when one soul comes to Christ when one soul turns their life around and accept Jesus as their lord and savior the whole of heaven rejoices how much more us we are on earth we need to place the corresponding value on a soul so when you think about soul winning you should think about it in terms of its value it's more valuable than a car it's more valuable than silver and gold if you have silver and gold in fact it's a means for you to actually buy a more important thing which is a soul hallelujah I loved so much when Tanatsuko was singing about excess love. God has given us excess love as we are sitting in this place. You know, someone asked me a question and they were like, how do you, how do you manage to have your life together so much? And I sat down to think about it and I was like, it's not me. It's not the degree that I have. It's not the mother that birthed me. It's not even the church that I go to, but it's the Holy Spirit. It's the value that God placed on me when he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary, to redeem me from a life of darkness and death into the kingdom of the marvelous light. Oh, come on, saints, we need to value souls. We need in the depth of our hearts, when we see people suffering, when we see people who don't know Jesus, when we see people who are wayward, we should not be judging them, but our hearts should be pricked to look for an opportunity. Borina nyota yacho, anti chomborina nzara yacho, ndaiva ne mukadzi mumba, asi trauzi raira mbaku gararaka varika, asi nasi jesu wakandi ponesa, tarira uone wakandi tora, wakandi visa mumatope, wakandi geza, ezi nezi nda chena, nda akubuinya, nda akupenya, nda akuratizika opane vanu, ndika pinda mubodrum, dichitaura, vano totere rao izguirangu, usafunge kuti degree randi naro, usafunge kuti imari kana kuti chi asi nyasha zanda kaitiru wa na jesu, kune wakaitiru wa nyasha here, kune wakaitiru wa nyasha here nyasha izozo, tinofana kuzirati zavari kunze uko atifane kugumira muno it must not end here that grace that was given unto us by God it must not end here the word of God says that the grace of God must not be in vain. Why do we hint souls that the grace of God, the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ must not be in vain? Imagine with me you have a child. I'm a mother. I know the feeling. When I hear my child crying, there's a gut-wrenching feeling in me that I feel. Imagine God had to give up his child to go on a ragged cross, to be nailed on one side and the other, to bleed, to be beaten with the cat of nine tails uh, to all oh, his flesh was ripped apart urimbere ki wewe uchitari samwana wako achiro wakudaro achipfizi sikuwa kudaro achiru wazi sikuwa kudaro a lot of people preach and they say God couldn't look at Jesus on the cross because of the sin but I also think it was the heart of a parent how can I look at my child I am helpless they have to go through the process they have to die for the sins of men. They have to do this thing. He was pierced on the side. Water and blood gushing out of him. How can we let that sacrifice be in vain? We ought to, we 
win souls. We ought to win souls. Hallelujah. It's not a program. Don't think about the money. Don't think about the, as, the seed that apostle is asking for. Think about the soul that will be saved. Think about the woman that is in the streets. It's cold right now. She's there naked, stuck naked. She has to sleep with 20 men. Her soul has become seared. Her conscience has become seared. She is normal. Uno zita say, Kurara never rume twenty in one night. Moyawako Ninge Uchiri Poere. Think about that woman. Think about that woman. And you will value soul winning. And you value kingdom advancement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the evidence of true maturity as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, is fruitfulness. God is glorified when we bear much fruit. John 15 verse 8. In this my father God is glorified when we win souls, when we produce fruit. And it is God's desire to see men saved. 1 Timothy 2 verse 4 he said, Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. This is why we should win souls, because it is God's desire. If we who are called of God are no longer of ourselves, our lives, 2 Corinthians verse five, chapter 5 talks about this. We are now called, we have received a ministry of reconciliation, because we have been reconciled. We have been equipped with the word of reconciliation. Now our lives are no longer our own. We don't live for ourselves. So saints, we're not following Jesus just to follow, but we follow to bear fruit. As you are following, you are going out to call others. Come and see a man like the woman at the world's said just one encounter with Jesus and she went out and she said come and see a man I have seen a man who can change your life I have seen a man who can correct your alignment I have seen a man who can cause joy in your marriage to come back again I have seen a man who can cause you to be fruitful is it a child that you need oh I have seen a man whose waters if you drink from you will never thirst again you may drink from the bar, you may drink from Chitachema Zimai or whatever, but there's a man called Jesus. He is not a club, he is not an organization, he is full of living waters. And when you drink of him, you will never thirst again. Hallelujah. So we ought to invite others. We ought to invite others that this sacrifice will not be in vain. Hallelujah. And from the beginning, when Jesus was calling the disciples, he said it, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He didn't say, follow me and I will get you married. Follow me and I will give you a car. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So we need to continue the work of Jesus. These are the greater works he was talking about. Greater works than these shall you do. You shall win more souls than me. Jesus had no microphone. I have a microphone. So I must win more souls than him. Jesus had no Facebook page. But I have a Facebook page. So I have a bigger reach. So greater works than he did. Shall I be able to do? Hallelujah. Let's take advantage of the season we are in. We are in a time of so much resources. Internet. Exposure. It's a global village. We can win souls. Hallelujah. And I want to bring soberness to you, John 17. We must win souls because at some point we will give an account. We will give an account like Jesus did. Jesus said in John 17 verse 12, All these that you gave me, I kept them. Headache. Oh, but, oh, shame. Oh, no, saints. We will give an account. Did we keep them that God gave us? 
Did we use the gift? Because salvation is a gift that must be shared also with others. What did you do with that gift? We can't afford to be stagnant. Because stagnant water stink. If you stay in the same place, it's a flow. Somebody say it's a flow. Hallelujah. So what can we do? How can we win souls? I want to talk about a few strategies that you can use to win souls practically. You can use the strategy of invitation. Luke 14 verse 13. Jesus says, when you have a banquet, go out, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind. Today we are having a banquet of the word. God has prepared for us a meal that we may consume and our spirits are nurtured. Our spirits are grown. How much more would he rejoice when he sees us bringing the lame, bringing the poor, bringing the maimed. You know someone poor in spirit. You know someone whose life is lame. They might not be lame physically, but their marriage is lame. Their business is lame. They need nourishment. How much more will it please the Father if we would fill the house of God that we can feast together with the lame, the poor, with those that do not have as much as we do. Hallelujah. So sometimes it's not just about money. Pamwa wuna ma thousands, nema millions. As iyo ye yokuta kwire kombi newe kutu uye. Une access to a banquet. A banquet. Apostle is a, a chef. A more, I don't know how many stars. 25 star chef when it comes to the word. How can you not bring someone to enjoy? There is everything. Prophecy. There is teaching. There is preaching. You come here and you go home feeling like a champion hallelujah bring others so they can feel like a champion hallelujah and also the strategy of visitation matthew 25 verse 35 jesus said when you visited me in prison with the people were asking why where did you say we visited you oh lord where did you say we came to see you in prison where did you say we came to feed you but if you did it for a stranger if you, and he said, if you visited a stranger in prison, you did it for me. If you fed a stranger, you fed me. So you can use this strategy. This is what thrives in the mainline churches. Visitation. Your brethren, your sister, go and commiserate with them. Let those that are cry, cry with those that are crying. Let those that are celebrating, we celebrate also with them. As we mirror a program, we go church office. Kuti manzu wa kuti muna haruku chata. Kana uti manzu wa kuti mskana ya da kurorwa. Kumumba tsira o mufare na ye ne muriake. You don't even need to go and do anything. But sometimes when someone sees your face, maybe they are grieving. They have just lost a loved one. And they just see your face. Ne kuti muna gara mese pu church pasa. Side, never side, and they see your face. They feel the comfort of the Holy Spirit. They feel the comfort of God. Kuti surely God is here. I might be crying. I might be in a bad situation. I might have nothing right now. But as surely as I've seen my sister, I know that God has come to see me. Hallelujah. We need to love each other. We need to spread this love that has been shed abroad in our hearts by God. Hallelujah. Then the strategy of preaching the word. We can preach the word just as I'm doing on a pulpit. But it also includes sharing your testimony. You don't need to be a good preacher to preach the word. You can be at work and someone is struggling and you see that this person is struggling and you can just say, Sha, gee, you know, let me tell you this thing. You know, Mwariva Kandibatsira so, so, so. Ndaiva ne depression. Ndaiwa muna angaka garu wane matimoni. Ndaisada kana kumbuta urane vamwe. Ndaisa funga kuti my life will go anywhere. But God himself, he took me out of the gutters. He set my feet upon the rock. Now I can boldly declare that I am a child of God. I am excessly loved. I am more. Andina angu baba wanda kakura na avo. Asi baba wanda kaziva variku denga ava. Vakatoni Hallelujah. 
So you give your testimony. You have life conversations with people. At every opportunity, take every opportunity to minister to someone, to help someone. Don't be shy. You don't need to be afraid. Because Jesus said, go ye into the world and make disciples of men. At the end of it, he says, and I will be with you. I will be with you and I will help you. Matthew 28, I will be with you and I will help you. So you are not alone. As you are going out of this place, you need to trust that you are carrying the Holy Spirit. You have angels backing you. No devil in hell can come on your way and destroy you. He may try to resist you, but greater is he that is on the inside of you than he that is on the outside. Like the man of God says, open the eyes of the young men that he may see that they that are with us are more than they that are against us. Hallelujah. Yes, we need to win souls. Another strategy is using your spiritual gift. Ephesians 4, verse 7 to 8. When Jesus was leaving, he gave gifts to men. All of us in here, we have a gift it's not just for you to make money and pay school fees for your own child, but also for the child of another. Your spiritual gifts must edify the body of Christ. Verse 11 to 16, some are apostles, some are teachers, some are preachers, some are evangelists, some are mothers, some are sisters, some are listeners. Some are jokers. Some come and do praise and worship. Some are teachers of the word. Some are teachers in school teaching young children. Those are souls also. Some are cooks. They cook food. That is edifying. That is nice. Some are influencers on Instagram, on Facebook. They should influence unto the glory of the Lord. All of us with all our gifts we have a mandate to win souls. Hallelujah. Then we can use the strategy of generosity. First to the men of God. Romans 10 verse 14. How can he preach unless he be sent? There is one out there who needs to believe. Who needs to receive the word of God. But how can he receive that word unless there is a preacher to preach to him? How can that preacher preach unless someone sends him out to go and preach? For who goes to war? 1 Corinthians 9, verse 7, roundabout. Who goes to war at his own expense? Apostle is going to war for souls. He is first warring for you as a soul and is warring out there for souls that have not yet come to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. How can he go on his own? How can he go at his own expense? We as the children, we as the mature ones, we as the ones that have been given grace for a longer time, we must stand with him like the women of substance did with Jesus and they said, you just rest. Go and look for the scriptures. Do, go and do the preaching of the word. We will stand with you financially. Is it an air ticket you need? Is it a hotel stay you need? Is it money you need for soul winning out there? For your money, if it is not in, found in outreach, you can never be rich like our father always says. Hallelujah. You can never be truly rich because the true riches are more than money. They are more than silver or gold. They are the intangible blessing of God that you can receive when you are a giver. Hallelujah. So we give first to the man of God and we send him out to do the, word, the work of God. And then we also give to the church. Malachi 3 verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes, all of them, and the offerings into my house that they may be meat in the storehouse because there are those that will come hungry and they will need to be fed that there may be meat in the house of the Lord we need to bring ye the tithe and all the offerings hallelujah and to friends family and strangers Proverbs 11 verse 25 he waters others shall also be watered the generous soul will be made rich 
and he who waters others will also be watered himself. So another strategy that is most powerful when it comes to soul winning is the strategy of generosity. Hallelujah. Then the strategy of living a holy life. Apapa, yeah. You know, the thing that has made me appreciate holiness in a different light is I don't equate holiness to perfection. A lot of times when you start talking about the topic of holiness, people are intimidated because they feel like you are calling them to a high standard of perfection they cannot reach. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm not I'm not perfect and things like that. But let me tell you something. Holiness is not perfection. God is not looking for perfection from you. God is looking for you to be separate, to be set aside. I know you know that term. You need to set yourself apart, to be set apart, to be holy, to be consecrated unto the good work of the Lord as a vessel of honor. Hallelujah. You need to look at yourself and you need to value your own soul even. Your soul, you must value it enough to set yourself apart from the works of darkness. To set yourself apart from dead and filth of the world. Hallelujah. You need to value yourself. Holiness is a powerful tool. Because when people see us, they are reading our lives. We may stand on pulpits like this and preach to people. But if our lives do not match the preaching that we are preaching, then they will not listen to us. What you speak must be how you live. Who you are in the light must be who you are in the shadows. Who you are around many people must be who you are in your house. We must strive not for perfection, but for being set apart. Just as Jesus was set apart, just as God is set apart, he's saying, come up higher. Come unto me. Come near me. Don't be perfect, but just separate yourself. Concentrate Concentrate yourself and you will see what I will do with you. When you make that effort, there's a verse in Leviticus that says, Consecrate yourself and I will sanctify you. So you just need to take that first step. Just so you can be set apart that you may be found with no blemish that you may be holy unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's a powerful strategy. That's a powerful strategy. I found it to be really effective in my own life. I am by no means perfect. But when you make the commitment, the effort to set yourself apart, to just live a consecrated life for God, your life shines more and more until the perfect day. And the world will see it and they will be drawn to it. And when they come, then you take them to God and you say, come and see a man. Hallelujah. Another strategy is the strategy of prayer and fasting. Obviously, soul winning and kingdom advance, advancement, it's a war. We cannot go into the battlefield unarmed. We cannot go into the battlefield without the Holy Ghost. We cannot go without being consecrated. Acts 1 verse 8, they were in one accord, in one place. They had set themselves apart for a time to pray and to fast and to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And after that, as the Holy Spirit came, Peter was bold to speak and say, Men of Jerusalem, see these people, they are not drunk with wine as you suppose, but they are filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, they, was, they were afraid. They were hidden in that place for a long time. The same people that killed Jesus. But Peter was able to stand up boldly after tarrying in the presence of God and say that Jesus, 
Jesus whom you crucified, he is the one I am preaching. So yes, it may look controversial. Yes, it may look like you want to attack me, but right now I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't have a power of my own. I have a power from the Most High, and I preach this Jesus. I am not afraid of the social culture in this generation. I am not afraid to be laughed at. I am not afraid to be mocked. I am not afraid that they will call me Sister Holy. I will not be afraid that they will call me self-righteous, but I will preach this Jesus for what he has done for me, for the things that I have seen him do, for the sacrifice that he did on the cross of Calvary. Surely, surely, I can stand up in boldness and preach this Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, I sense a staring in the house of God. Are we going to preach this Jesus uh, to the uttermost parts of the world? Are we going to make disciples of the nations, uh, bringing glory to God our Father? Hallelujah. So we win souls. We use some of these strategies. There's that is within your giftings, your psyche, your mental aptitude. You can use any one of these strategies. But it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. Because the call that Jesus spoke when he was going in Matthew 28, he said, go and make disciples. Now the process of making a disciples is not just about telling someone to come to church and then they come here and then we are happy that we had 50 visitors on a Sunday. Then we clap our hands and then those people go. Those people need to be followed up. Those people need to be grounded in the things of God. Those people need to be mentored. The Great Commission requires us to make disciples that they may be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. They can only come to the knowledge of the truth when they are taught the truth. Hallelujah. So truth must be taught. We must not just celebrate at someone coming to church or giving their life to Christ. Ritori basara totanga. Hallelujah. We must teach them. We must sit down with them. We must correct in love. We must rebuke. We must warn. We must exalt. We must build up. Just as you, someone was patient with you to take you from being a baby in Christ, to teach you how to walk. You were taught how to crawl and you were taught how to stand and then you were taught how to walk. Now that you are running, you need to take another who you see is struggling to even crawl and you say to them no this is the way you should go when they are about to bump their head on an object you are standing in the gap and you are saying no 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 come and go this way we are modeling Christ and we are trying to bring Christ the fullness of Christ into another soul until Christ is perfected and then that soul will also continue to bring another they will build another in Christ until Christ is perfected hallelujah so it's continuous. Somebody say continuity. The body of Christ needs continuity. I feel like we are at a point where we have a, a chokehold. We are celebrating so much the crusades that we are doing, filling up the pews. We have so many visitors. On a Sunday, we have 100 visitors in a month. We have 200 visitors, but no one is following up after those people. And those people are going back to the bar. Those people are going back to depression. Those people are going back to cancer. Those people are going back to their old ways. We need to correct the saints. Hallelujah. We must bear fruit according to the book of John 15 and that fruit must remain. And fruit can only remain when it is nurtured, when it is discipled. Hallelujah. Galatians 4 verse 19. My little children, for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. So the goal of discipleship is to labor, to labor until Christ is fully formed in someone. So you are intentional about this. When you see a new visitor here, you chase after them. You make relationship with them in order for you to help them to trust and follow Jesus 
and grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ until Christ be fully formed in them. It's work, saints, but we must work it. Hallelujah. We cannot say we have fulfilled the great commission by simply having visitors show up, we cheer, they, we have an obligation to follow them up and make disciples. Colossians 1, 28 to 29. Reproducing, in, reproducing Christ in others is the ultimate goal and demonstration of maturity in Christ. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That's why I said you will give an account because we ought to present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. When you yourself have a work, a stage that has been perfected in your life, it's your obligation to go out to look for someone to disciple that Christ may also be formed and perfected in them. Hallelujah. As a church, we have programs that we do. For example, the cleanup campaign that we did on a Saturday. Many lives came to Christ. Hallelujah. Many souls, they, they registered their names. No, we want to come to church. We have these problems. We have these issues. And we thank God for those programs. We thank God for boosting our clips on Facebook, for putting material on social media. People then respond to those clips to those adverts and they send messages and from the admin office we call them and invite them to church then after that it's the job of the congregation to identify it's my job as a young mother to see a young mother who is new to say that mother Whatever she came looking for, I want to be the solution that God has brought into her life. Dad has taught us many times that God answers prayer through men. You are that man. You are that answer to that person's prayer. Someone's solution, you have it in your pocket, you have it in your head, you have it in your handbag, you have it at your pantry in your house, you have it within you. You have a spiritual gift that someone who comes here desolate, desperate, they can benefit from you. That's why I said you must value yourself, value your own soul, see the value you carry. Could you surely I can preach? I am Melissa, I can teach, I can. And teach a young mother kuti wona ka inini dafamba so mumere jangu i can teach a young girl and say it is possible to be married a virgin you don't need to be ashamed varegedze vakuseke varegedze vakuti une zvene varegedze vakuti uri sister holy asi mwari vachaisa kubwinya pauri you will be a royal diadem varegedze vati akabva kumbare akakurira pashabini asi nasi chi Ndiwona izvandave nekuda kwenyasha dzamwari nekuda kwezvaka isa mandiri saka mauri mune chinhu chinobatsira munhu pane singu mother asi wane murume nezuro asi kuziya kuti otangira papi iwe mwari vakakukundisa ukato raise avana vari kutoenda ku university watone muzukuru watone mukwasha chinokutadzisa chi kutora all that single mother womugarisa pasi woti tarisa Wone shandaka itiru wana mwari Tarisa wone mota yandaka tengeru wane mwana Mwana kareru wana singu mother Mwana kareru wana singu father Tarisa wone shandaka itiru wana mwari Shisina ano gona kusana ngura Shisina kuti isimba rangu Shisina kuti kugona kana kufunga kwangu You have something in you You have a testimony in you Don't keep it locked up Those living waters They must gush out And they must water others. Hallelujah. They must water your neighbor. They must water your sister. You see that your neighbor is downcast. Do not just look at them and leave. My sister, what is wrong? My brother, what is wrong? By joy you will draw from the wells of salvation. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Six months, 
Nisinaka na Maria kubadara renti. Nisinaka na cheku jika mumba mangu. Asinda ingo uya jaka daro. Nichingo rumbiza unwari. Nichingo riza mururu. Apana kana akambo jiona. Kushika nasi mwari wandi buritza. Ndavaka uyangu imba. Kushika nasi mwari wandi buritza. Ndava one yangu marriage. Ndava one yangu muri. Ayu wapane chiri mauri. Pane chiri mauri. Uza neighbor wako utipane chiri mauri. There is something in you that you can use. There is a testimony in you. Do not keep that testimony. Do not keep it locked inside. It can benefit someone. It can help someone. It can edify the body of Christ. It can grow the church. Hallelujah. For God gives men as gifts to men. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we need to be going after souls to disciple them. Nda fara kutimunu auya kuchech. Nda kuchida kumubatsira. Ochi prosper say in business. Ochi gona say kusubmita kumurume wake. Ochi gona say kuwamurume akanaka. Ochi pasa say kuchikoro. Iwo mwariva kugonesa. Jitire omumwe. Hallelujah. We no longer live for ourselves. We no longer live for ourselves. We live for Jesus. We live for Jesus. Second Corinthians 5. We no longer live for ourselves. We live for Jesus. Your life should not be about you. Don't worry about you. And he died for all. That those who live should live no longer for themselves. But for him who died for them and rose again. He did the dirty work for you. All you need to do is share the gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we must convert, mature, and multiply. We convert souls. We mature them and we multiply them. It's not just a program. It's a mindset shift. It's a mind renewal, a paradigm shift. Don't think about it as, ah, this is an apostle of manyane so winning. No. Jesu. Ano garachi manyane so winning. Hallelujah. You know, something that uh, Bishop Oyadepo said that really touched me. He said, God values so, so much. That when you bring a soul to him, he will bring you, he will give you what money cannot buy. Ah, isn't that powerful? Whatever you need, be it for your own life, your business, your whatever, just be about the business of the Father, and you will see him give you what you do not even qualify for. Look at me. Look at me. Those who know me and have seen me grow. For a long time, they know this is not how I was. But I made the decision and I said, God, it's not going to be a job for me to work in the church office. Because you can work for God and not work with him. You can work for him and not have the passion that he has. But I said, God, birth in me the passion that you have. Dita ze kuzoro ora nda bati rao. Kana ndisina mari aru kuda pa mwendine wisdom. Kana ndisina wisdom pa mwendino zia muna no gona kumu bati ra. Andinga mbo pere eruine jipo mwari. Nda mandira tiza kutambu zikwa kwe munu. Munga ndira tizire here kutindingo ramba ndaka daro. God said I do not bring to the time of birth and close the womb. So he cannot bring that person to a point where they will find a solution and then they are blocked because I'm shy, because I'm afraid. No, I said, God, I want to be passionate about souls. I want to be passionate about people. I want to love people like you do. I want to pursue them. I want to look at someone and say, Chido, I see you are not well. What's going on? Just that hug I can give her. I want to look at someone and say, you, what is going on with you? Just that advice I can give them. I will not rest, oh God. I will find every opportunity. <laughs> 
I will just send a text message. Nay, and this could go on a mazvano. Kochi, chirukiti, kawuri raitere. Vanavari say, and someone will break down and tell you, ah, shamari, my kids are not well. All right, let's pray. Let's seek the Lord. He will surely answer us. Hallelujah. We must have a passion for souls, a, a passion, a fire for kingdom advancement. So truth must be taught, but it must also be modeled, like I said, by living a holy life. You must speak, you must teach, and you must model it. You must speak, you must teach, you must model it. It's not perfection, it's purity. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers. Just be an example. You don't need to be the everything. Just be an example to the believers. In word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Hallelujah. So as we are here, we are being trained to seek and to save the lost, just as Jesus did. And you will see also that as you are discipling someone, it has a mutual benefit. When they are growing, you are also growing. Maybe you are down in that season, but as you encourage someone else, you yourself, you will be encouraged because he who waters others will also be watered. God will not allow you to stay dry. God will not allow you to stay empty when you are pouring yourself out to others. God will not allow your faith to diminish when you are encouraging others in their faith. God will not allow you to stay down when you are uplifting others. God will not allow you to remain poor when you are striving for others to prosper. God will not allow you to remain sick when you yourself are praying for someone to be healed. God will not allow you to remain desolate when you yourself are giving comfort to someone. In that day when you need comfort, you will see people show up for you. You will see people do things for you that you never expected because God will not allow anyone one of his ambassadors to be put to shame because he's representing his name. Hallelujah. Yeah. We are ambassadors of Christ. Do I have ambassadors of Christ in the house? Are you happy to be an ambassador of Christ in this house? Hallelujah. So we will not be left desolate. Jesus said, when you went, when I sent you, did you lack anything? Yes, I might not have given you the bag on you, but did you lack like anything? Did you lack like transport? Did you lack like, like money? Did you lack like food? Did you lack, like, when you really look at it, when you are in a God, when, a, when you are on a God assignment, when you make up your mind to obey an instruction that God gives you, you don't lack. Like. You never lack. Like. You never, never lack. Like. When you truly follow the path that God is telling you to go, you don't lack. Like. Because along the way, there will be sheaves. There will be drops on purpose. On purpose. They will drop things for you on purpose. Like Boa said, Mudo nezere apa. Mudo nezere apa. Saka pa unengo uri munzira ya warati zwa na mwari kutifamba iyoyo. Ramba uchi ifamba mudikani. Nekuti pa ucha shika apa paneche kunonga. Pa ucha shika apa ucha nonga iri mota. Pa uno shika apa ucha nonga iri contract. Pa uno zo shika apa uno nonga iri imba. Pa uno wana apa uno wana wasiru wa mari. Pa uno shika apa uno wana aikakanda siru wa chimwe. Mwari ya asi ya ma ambassadors ake achishaya. Nyaso jitare sisa. Ukafamba mumatsi. Simba, awai siru anaisha jesu, pane chava siya pasaid, pane chava kusira kuti iwe uwe sustained, pane chava kusira kuti iwe o life yako inake, ne kuti melisa unga mire seiko pamberi pevanu, usina o kuchena, vasinga zhone o kuti ya mutuma, shakata uruana mozisi, kuti if I would go, they must know that it is you who sent me, I bear on my forehead the mark of our Lord Jesus Christ, I bear in in my body, the mark of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let no man trouble me. Let no man resist me. Let no man 
men refuse me, my mouth will be irresistible. All my destiny helpers will help me. All the contracts that I want, they will come my way. All the tenders that I tender for, they will come my way because I desire to build the house of God. Because I desire to bring souls to God. Therefore, how can I lack? How can I not have the provision? How can I build a church in a mall if I don't have the money? He will surely give it to us when we make up our mind to be true ambassadors of Christ, to lay ourselves aside, to be spent for God. Hallelujah. To do his work with all obedience. Hallelujah. Until with this, we see the saints come to the fullness of their knowledge in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Ambassadors of Christ, you are not alone. You are not alone, ambassadors of Christ. There are so many benefits of so winning. Your faith will be strengthened as you go out. Romans 1 verse 12. The verse 11 says, For I long to see you that I may impart some spiritual gift to you so that you may be established. But I love verse 12 and it says, That is that I also who is imparting to you may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. So as you are going out to encourage someone to raise someone up, you also will be raised. Hallelujah. Your faith will also be encouraged encouraged as you are imparting the Christ that is in you into someone else he replenishes you because you must not run dry because out of your belly must continue to flow rivers of living waters not dead waters you will not be known for dead transactions you will not be known anymore for a dead marriage you will not be known anymore for a dead life Lazarus you are coming forth because the glory of God must be seen you will be known, uh, you will not be known anymore by that proverb of Murumeano Kumbirama five dollars. You will not be known anymore by that proverb. Yakuti Munu Asinga Goneku Batamari Nekuti Uruguita Basaramari. Hallelujah. So we must be about the Father's business because there are so many benefits. Long life is promised. Proverbs 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous. The fruit of the righteous. Verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who wins souls is continually wise. So even as God has imparted into you the wisdom to win souls, that wisdom will continue because you are a continuer in the work of God. Hallelujah. Wisdom is your portion. You shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. Daniel 12 verse 3. I see stars shining in this place. I see you shining like the brightness of the firmament. I see you drawing people to the light that you are shining and I see you leading people to the mountain of God, to the house of God. They will, they will hold on to the hem of your garment and they will say, let us go with you because we have seen that God is with you. Let us go to KPM. What do you want to say? Let us go with you because we have heard you preaching and we have heard that no man can preach preach these things except the Holy Ghost is upon him that no man can drive this car except the Holy Ghost enables him that no man can do these miracle signs and wonders except God be upon them so results will abound in your life for the sake of soul winning it is a benefit of soul winning that further allows you to win more souls it is proof that what you know works so if someone sees results in your life they will say well, Micah 4 verse 1 They will come to the mountain of the Lord And they will say Teach us the ways of the Lord Teach us how you got these things Teach us how you can do the miraculous Hallelujah You will have power flowing in your life The power of God will meet you At the point of your obedience Hallelujah You will be given more command Of the supernatural
natural by God by reason of being a soul winner Mark 16 verse 17 oh you will do signs and wonders hallelujah you shall take up serpents you shall take up poison and it will not harm you because you are a commander of the supernatural you will go into the realm of Isaiah 45 verse 11 command ye me concerning these things you will even be able to command God and say let the waters be parted that your children may pass through hallelujah you may even be able to command God and say let this woman be healed my father for the sake of the glory to your name and they will glorify God in you because you are a commander of the supernatural you will do signs and wonders in your business you will do signs and wonders in your marriage you will do signs and wonders on the marketplace you will do signs and wonders in ministry you will do signs and wonders divine health will be your portion proverbs 13 verse 17 because god will not allow any one of your bones to break because he needs those bones to be moving about to and fro compelling them drawing them into the house of god telling them about jesus so he will not allow your feet to stumble in the name of jesus he will not allow you to strike your foot against a stone he will set his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways no devil shall be able to resist you no witch shall be able to resist you no one shall be able to prevail against you no poison that has been put your way shall be able to harm you because you are doing the work of the lord and he will answer all your prayers john 15 verse 16 when you pray believing he will answer your prayers when you pray for someone to be healed they will be healed because you are doing the work of the lord you did not choose him but he chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask in the you fast the father in his name he will give it to you hallelujah so as you are in the work that he has appointed you bearing fruit you will ask for anything and he will give it to you your father will crown you with honor john 12 verse 26 if any man serves me him i my father will honor hallelujah god will honor you as you are serving him so it pays to go after souls incomparably it pays more than any other transaction for when he sends you you will not lack going after god and the entrance of the kingdom supernaturally prospers the believer hallelujah may glory be given to god for this work hallelujah how many are committed to win souls to be disciples in the house it is a call upon you and you must answer that call until christ is perfected in them in the mighty name of jesus may we give glory unto god hallelujah 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 glory to god